Hello, welcome back. The next statement we're going to look at is the income statement. The income statement helps us understand the sources of revenue and costs associated with a company and therefore uh, we can determine whether or not the, the company is profitable. So the most important equation in the income statement is or the relationship that it identifies is the net income. So uh, pretty straightforward, net income represents the revenue minus all the expenses. And here we distinguish the different types of expenses. So in general, we have operating expenses, which is what, we, what it takes to keep the company going. Um, and then we have interest expense. Interest expense is considered financial expense and then tax, which are money that we pay to the government. Um, for most of investors, we don't really have, uh, we don't, we seldom buy an entire company. So you, when we are working with, with um, the financial statements, oftentimes it's useful to look at what is my share of the company worth. So the per share concept is very useful. Uh, one very common per share uh, statistics that is reported is earnings per share, earnings per share or EPS. Earnings per share is simply net income, net income divided by the number of shares of stocks outstanding. So uh, that's just if I own one share of the company's stock, that's just my share of net income and it's called earnings per share. You can also go to the balance sheet and convert all the numbers that we have seen earlier into a per, per share item. So you can divide total asset by the number of shares outstanding that becomes assets per share. You can divide the equity by number of shares outstanding that become your book value equity per share. So this is a very useful uh, metric to, to compute. Now you, may, you may remember from accounting, um, there's a concept called GAAP. GAAP stands for the General Accepted Accounting Principle. And what is important about uh, General Accounting Accepted Principle and Generally Accepted Accounting Principle is that these are the principles that guide the preparation of the financial statements. And if you're an accountant, these are the principles that you need to follow. From a finance standpoint, we are users of this financial statement. So we still need to understand GAAP because that t tells us about the quality of the information that we're examining. Uh, take, for example, revenue. The general accounting accept general accepted accounting principle um, has uh, tells us when can we recognize revenue. So the term is revenue recognition. What does that mean? Well, in, if you are operating a lemonade stand, that is fairly straightforward. You gave the lemonade stand, you gave the lemonade to your customer, the customer pays you, and or you get cash first from your customer before you hand them the lemonade, and the revenue is is recognized. You make recognized. You make a sale. However, uh, in uh, the business world, oftentimes um, transactions are a little bit more complicated. For example, if you sign a contract with a company for a project that lasts three years, how do you? When do you recognize that revenue? Do you recognize it after the entire project is completed at the end of year three? Do you amortize it over three years? Do you? Uh, do you have specific milestones and deliverables so that you can uh, recognize the revenue when a milestone is achieved, when a deliverable is accepted by the customer? So all those are different possible ways to recognize revenue. Uh, GAP doesn't tell you which one is right, which one is wrong. Um, it's up to the firm to decide. Uh, there are extreme cases where it becomes illegal, um, and this has happened in the U.S. in the past. Uh, there are companies that actually um, consider a sales when all they have done is make a sales call. They make the presentation to the customer, propose a contract, no contract has been signed, and they consider that a sales. That is illegal. Even when a company is using general accepted accounting 
principles which are legal, um, there's still a whole spectrum of when they re recognize revenues. And in an accounting and finance, the term we use is how aggressive a firm is in its accounting um, policies. An aggressive firm may recognize revenue a lot sooner than a firm that is more conservative. So when we talk about quality of earning, um, that come into play because a company that is more conservative means that they only recognize revenue when they have a really strong confidence that they will com complete the transaction and receive payment for it. Um, an aggressive firm may be more willing to recognize revenue even though there is some probability or even a slightly pretty high probability that a customer may not commit to finishing out the entire contract or may there may be some concern over payment. So that's what we mean by quality of earnings. So that is one example for revenue. The other is cost. Uh, the same thing. Do we recognize something as research and development or do we want to expand something over time? Um, and versus expensing the entire uh, investment today. So there are IRS rules that, that restrict the, what the company can and cannot do. However, um, a company is legally allowed to report to investors um, costs using a different set of depreciation rule versus what they use to compute um, tax. So again, a company can uh, be conservative, aggressive in terms of um, recording the expenses. So a company, uh, a term that you may have, you may, hear, you may hear is called earnings management. So a company may accelerate revenue. So recognize revenue as much as, as fast as they can. Uh, and they may delay costs as much as possible within the legal limit and so that they can manage revenue. And sometimes they may want to speed up revenue, sometimes they may want to uh, uh, earnings, and sometimes they may want to delay earnings. Uh, these topics are com covered in depth in the undergraduate level intermediate accounting class. Uh, for our purposes, we just want to, we, we want to know enough so that when we read the footnotes of the financial statements, we can have a fairly uh, good idea whether or not this company practice conservative, conservative accounting principle or aggressive accounting principles. The other item that we want to look at in, uh, is, that distinguish is a cash item versus non-cash items. An example of non-cash item is depreciation. Next, we're going to take a look at a sample income statement. Here's our income statement. The income statement is considered a flows statement. What that means is the number you see represents the flow of revenue and the flow of expenses over a time period. In this example, the time period is for the entire year. It is for the year ended December 31st for year one. What that means is the $850,000 in revenue that you see were generated over the entire Next, we're going to take a look at expenses. There are different types of expenses. Cost of goods sold is a cash expense that's related to the operation of the firm. And then we have depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense. And when we subtract cost of goods sold and depreciation from revenue, we have earnings before interest and tax. Earnings before interest and tax is often abbreviated as EBIT, pronounced as EBIT. Another name for EBIT or, or earnings before interest and tax is operating income. So both terms mean the same thing. When you see operating income or you see EBIT or earnings before interest and tax, it refers to the amount, in this case, $240,000. We subtract interest and we end up with taxable income. And we subtract taxes from taxable income, we have net income. And remember, if we divide net income by the number of shares outstanding, we'll have earnings per share. So over the year, the company generated $171,550. What can it do with those money? It can pay out part of it as dividend. So in this case, the company pay out $20,000 as 
dividend. And the remaining, so if you subtract $20,000 from net income, the remaining $151,550, the company used to, for reinvestment. And we call that addition to retained earning. And the way that the income statement and the balance sheet is related is that each year, the retained earnings should increase by this amount. It should increase by the additions to retained earning. And you can check. You can check to see whether or not accumulated retained earnings increase by, so you, so you subtract the difference between these two, um, did it increase by the same amount? And of course it does because this is accounting. If the, if the, if the numbers do not match, then the balance sheet would not balance. So this is how the income statement and the balance sheet is related through the changes in accumulated retained earnings. So we'll end here for income statement. In the next, um, in the next video, we're going to go over income taxes.